Well, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be doing part two <coughs> of the smart home devices, which is the Google Home Mini and the Amazon Echo Dot. So now we will be comparing both of these devices and I will also be sharing my opinion on each one of these. So first, let's start with the overview. So the Alexa is just a, um, it's more like just like standard and you have your um, volume up, volume down, microphone mute and the button that activates Alexa, which I'm going to mute it. So on the back here, you have, up. Oh, I can't really see it, but you have your AVA, yeah. Your headphone out, or <laughs> audio out, and the um, USB, and on the Google Home Mini, you don't have any buttons, and the only mechanical or physical thing on it is the mute switch, which is right there. The mic's off. The mic's back on. So yeah. And the Google Home Mini has this nice um, fabric screen over it, and then it goes down way right at the bottom, which is where the speaker is. Speaker is right there. And then on the Amazon Echo, you have I am um, I think it's a speaker facing down or up, but all you have is these um little vent holes to take it out, to take the sound out of it. So now. Let's start with the features. So, yeah, one of the features with the Alexa is you can have it, you can pair it to smart home devices. So, like TP Link plugs and the Philips smart bulbs. And you can have it to control it, be like Alexa, turn off, blah, 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 blah. Lights in, blah, 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 room. And it'll do it. It has Bluetooth capabilities, so you can. Hook it up to an external speaker via Bluetooth also if you want to. Oh uh, yeah, you can set reminders, put your calendar, all that fancy reminding stuff. And uh, that's pretty much it for the um, Amazon Echo Dot. The um, Google Home Mini can pretty much do the same thing. It can work with all the smart home devices, TP-Link, Philips smart bulbs and um, yeah, I can set reminders and one thing that this can do that the um, Alexa can is it can distinguish between different voices and it can also oh yeah and you can also call people in your contacts in local businesses well the um, Echo Dot you can also call people in your contacts but you can't call local businesses which I would which I would which is what I like about the Google Home Mini it's a nice feature to have because I can say call the um, local Walgreens pharmacy and it'll call the local Walgreens pharmacy and yeah so now we'll move over to sound quality so I had a um, some jazz songs playing on this so and yeah, and you can um take the um your finger and place it on it, and I think you can um get it to play. Oh, that was volume. But yeah, and the volume controls are on the side here. Oh yeah, now it plays. You push, tap your finger on it like that, and um that's how it plays. jazz song. That's the sound quality on it. Stop. Stop. Stop it. Yeah. So yeah. 
you um, use the same finger things for the volume as the um, playing and pausing and whatever. It's a little bit fiddly, but it works most of the time. So now we'll mute, unmute that. Okay, so Alexa, play jazz songs. Here's a station for jazz music, all jazz, from Amazon Music. Yeah, that's quality on that. And there you go, that's the sound quality, so, um, stop. Uh, stop that before I get, maybe get a copyright claim. But, yeah, that's a different sound quality. And, yeah, one of the disadvantages of the Amazon Echo is that there's no playing and pause button, button, so you have to physically say it. Another thing, another feature that I like about the Amazon Echo, and this is my opinion. Some of this stuff is facts, and other of it is opinion. So it's sort of a comparison and my opinion. But the, the Amazon Echo has a button here that you can press it to... I didn't catch that. Um, activate and deactivate Alexa. Google Home Mini, I think, has a touch sensor right here, but it does not for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's with all the Google Home Minis, or maybe it's just mine. It does not activate the thing, so it won't bring up the Google Assistant when I touch it. So I have to say, hey Google, and there you go. Tell me a joke. One joke, coming up. Did you hear the joke about the roof? I would tell you, but it tends to go over people's heads. There you go. That's one of... <coughs> the Google Home... The Google Assistant's bad jokes. <laughs> but... Yeah. Oh, yeah, and here's the uh, mic off on it. When you um, flip the mic off... It... Nope. The mic's off. It's the four LEDs go red and it says the mic is off. The mic's back on. There you go, it says it. Instead of just like that. But now let's go over the features of the assistance. So the Alexa assistant you can do all that nice stuff with setting clocks and alarms. It can tell you the weather, tell you the news. Same with this one. But you have to speak in a very structured way in order to um, most of the time get what you want out of it. So there are like certain sets of commands and things, certain ways that you have to um, arrange phrases for them to go through. It's not all the time that you have to do that, but sometimes you got to do that. With the um, Google Home, with ugh, with the Google Assistant, you can speak a little bit more naturally to it, and it will um, catch your mistakes a little more. So let's just find an example of this. Hey Google, when was Steve Jobs born? Steve Jobs was born on February yeah. 24th, 1955. It catches your mistakes. I, as you hear it, I said Steve Jobs and not Steve Jobs. Alexa, when was Steve Jobs born? Steve Jobs was born on February 24th, 1955. Now, yeah, I caught it that time. Let's see if I can um, mess it up a little more. Hey, Google. When was Stav Jabes born? He was born on February 24th, 1955. Was that the same date? I don't know. Hey Google, when was Stav Jabes born? February 24th, 1955. I guess it was the same date, so I guess that's... I guess I caught my mistake. Let's see, um, Alexa. When was Stav Jabes born? Steve Jobs was born on February 24th, 1955. Yeah, I caught it also. 
It's a fairly simple name. But also another thing is that the for what I found, some people they say that the um Alexa gives you better search I'll improve over time. Yeah, I know you will. It gives you um better search results. But you have to structure it very specifically. And the Google you can structure it easier. But you don't get as good of results. But one thing I found is I can ask it a question, so let's, let's do something. Hey Google, why is my back so stiff in the mornings? According to Mayo Clinic, stiffness it gives me an have answer. causes that aren't due to underlying disease. Examples include inactivity, age, sprains, strains, or recovery from exercise. So that was the Google, and now let's ask Alexa. Why is my back so stiff in the mornings? Sorry, I don't know that. She doesn't know. But, yeah, that's more of the assistants on the thing. And what I like is that I'm pretty sure that both of these are good with follow-up questions, but I think the Google is a little better at it. So let me ask the Google a um, follow a one of the a question with a follow-up question. Hey Google, when was Steve Jobs born? Steve Jobs was born on February twenty-fourth, nineteen fifty-five. Hey Google, was he ever married to anyone? Steve Jobs was married to Laureen Powell between 1991 and 2011. Hmm. Hey Google, did they have any children? Lisa Brennan Jobs, Eve Jobs, and two others. Hey Google, how old are their children? The first two are 39 and 22 years old. I have four ages in total. Yeah, he has four ages, but he only listed the first two of them. What I also like about the Google Assistant is that it has two voices, and I'm pretty sure Alex, Alexa only has one. So let's ask Alexa the same questions now. Alexa, when was Steve Jobs born? Steve Jobs was born on February 24th, 1955. Alexa, what well, did he make? Did he have a wife? You don't have any notifications. Mm. When was Steve Jobs born? Steve Jobs was born on February twenty fourth, nineteen fifty five. Who was his wife? Steve Jobs' wife is Laureen Powell. Did they have any children? Sorry. I'm not sure. Mm, there you go. It works sometimes with the Amazon Echo, but not all the time. So, let's think of what else I can show you. Oh yeah, the apps. I don't have the um apps for both of them right now because the phone I was using its battery died, and now I have to charge it, so it is um, very much not working for this video, sadly. And I am, and I have limited time, so I had to make it now or never. So, one of the features that I like with the Google Home Mini is it has a um, timer function or like night mode, where what you can do is, you can, hmm, yeah, you can set the LED lights to be a specific brightness at light, at night, and you can make the volume not exceed a certain level, or automatically set it, or automatically set it to that at a specific time. So I set it to um, at seven o'clock p.m. the volume to be um. 
that much. And then at, and also for the LED lights to be about that dim. When it's dim before it flashes, that's how, that's what I said it to be. So, and then at 6 o'clock in the morning, it will revert back to the normal stuff. So, hmm, oh yeah, and uh, yeah, you have Google Music and everything else. The um, Google Home app is fairly easy to use because I've had a little bit of experience with it. The um, Amazon app, for the, I mean the Amazon Echo app, I don't really have that much as experience with it. So I'm not as well as like navigating around and stuff. But um, if you have a Prime membership, I think it's Amazon Music or something. It's pretty good for it. So... Let's go for prices. The um, Echo Dots and the um, Google Home Mini. I'm pretty sure in the beginning of when they were launched, they were um, about $49 for both of them. And basically now they've been going down to $29. So it's a pretty good deal. And I got this one at Best Buy with a um, membership or rewards points discount. So it was... Um, of the receipt right here. It was hmm. it was a um, five dollars off, so it was fourteen dollars plus tax. So this was about fifteen bucks. And this is still um twenty nine. But that's only if you get it at Best Buy and you have the um, memberships thing. Um to be honest, I originally wanted a um, Coral Red Google Home Mini, but they were um, Google Store exclusives, and they're all sold out, so I'm on the wait list for them to send me an email when it's going to come, because I'm definitely going to get one when it comes. But it's um, pretty nice. So... I've shown you both of the features, what the assistants are like, and maybe I'll make a part three showing the, um, what is it? Oh, yeah. Showing the, um, apps for them. So these are both really cool devices. If you want to, you can pick one of these up, or you could pick up both. Um, there is the black Echo Dot and a white Echo Dot, the, um, Chalk white Google Home Mini, the um, charcoal black Google Home Mini, and the um, coral red Google Home Mini. You have three colors and two for this one. Personally, my favorite, this is only my opinion. I'm not saying which one is better, which one is actually better, because I mean, this one could work for you or this one could work for you. My personal opinion is the Google Home Mini. I like it more than the Amazon Echo Dot. The Amazon Echo Dot, it's still good, it's still good, but I think I like the um, Google Home Mini a little bit more, and I would recommend, if you can, definitely, by definite, get the coral red color. Just do it. It's really, it looks really good, to be honest. The coral red looks really good. So, I, so my opinion, I like the Google Home Mini more on the coral red color. <laughs> So, um, yeah, thank you for watching this comparison between both of these and my thoughts and opinions on both of them. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. That is only if you want to.